We can split the entire span of human civilization into two periods, before the 1970s and then from the 1970s onwards. Before the 1970s, there were two realities. The first was that prime numbers were almost totally useless. They were certainly regarded by mathematicians and still are as being pretty and beautiful and there's so much interesting mathematics about prime numbers. But very few people before the 1970s would have said that prime numbers were useful. They were almost totally useless. The second reality before the 1970s was that keeping secrets had a very significant flaw. And that flaw was that if people knew how to encode a message, then they also knew how to decode the message. So when I was in uh, school, I think primary school, we used to do these things where we'd encode a message by saying that, you know, A would be replaced by the number 11 and B with 7 and C with 9 and D with 2, etc. And if I wanted to encode the message bad, well, that would become 7, 11, 2. But of course, the problem is that anyone who knew how to encode also knew how to decode. Anyway, around the 1970s, some very clever mathematicians worked out a way to use prime numbers to get round this um, encoding, decoding problem, so-called public key encryption. So this is a system where anybody can encode a message, but only the right people can decode the message. Amazingly, in about 10 minutes, I can give you a feel for how this encoding, decoding system works. If you want all the details so that you can encode a message which only the right people can decode, then you could have a look at my video, RSA Code Made Easy, which has all the mathematical details that you would need. So let's set the scene. I'm at home and I want to buy something. And for that, I need to send my password to my bank. And the obvious problem is that if I just send my password of 5174, that anyone, this guy down here, could be monitoring the transmission and he would know my password, which is not good for me nor the bank. So I want to be very clear here what we're talking about with public key encryption. On the bank's website here, it has exact instructions on how to encode my password. So everybody who's got access to this page, anybody in the world, basically can work out how to encode a password. So it might be something like take your password, multiply it by itself 3,252 times, and take the remainder when you divide by 56,210. Something like that, but some specific process that enables anybody to encode the password. And everybody uses the same system. So what we're talking about here, again, is that anyone can encode using this publicly known encoding program, yet only the bank can decode. So to understand that, we need, really only need one idea, uh, the euler totian function, named after the famous mathematician Euler. It's given the Greek symbol phi. And for our purposes, we're only interested in phi about prime numbers. So prime numbers, remember, are numbers that have no factors other than one in themselves. So 7, 11 are prime, but 6, 12 and 10 are not prime. So what we're interested in is this statement here. The Euler function, if we input the product of two primes, which I've got here as P and Q, they're the two primes, well it just tells us that phi of this product of two primes is just P minus 1 times Q minus 1. Very simple idea. So let's see how this works. If you were asked what phi of 253 is, well, you'd say that that's, well, 253 is 11 times 23, and both of them are prime, so we can use this rule. So we'll say that phi of 11 times 23 is equal to 11, times, uh, 11 minus 1 times 23 minus 1, and that's 10 by 22, and that's 220. So the bank picked its two prime numbers, 11 and 23, and multiplied them together to get 253. The 253 is, if you like, the encoding key. So it allow, it's put up on the bank's website and it allows anyone to encode their password. So in my case, it allows me to encode my password from 5174 
to 6825. The 6825 now uh, is transmitted from my computer to the bank. Now the bank knows that phi of 253 is equal to 220 and this 220 essentially unlocks the encryption. It's, if you like, the decoding key. So using that 220, the bank is able to take the 6825 and transfer it, transform it into 5174. And that is my password, and then the transaction can go ahead. Now at this stage, you're probably saying, well, hold on, that doesn't work. Here's our bad guy down here. Now he picks up the 6825 encoded password. He looks on the bank's website and he sees the encoding key is 253. And he argues that, well, 253 is 11 times 23. So I can work out phi of 253 is 220. I just use that formula that everybody knows. So it seems like the system doesn't work. And on what I've presented here, it doesn't work. But here's the catch. Here's the catch. The bank doesn't use small prime numbers. It uses very large prime numbers. So using quite cheap computer software that anyone can get, you can generate huge prime numbers very quickly. Here's one, it's 150 digits long. So the bank may use this prime number and then they need a second prime number. So they do the same thing again. Here's another prime number that's about 250 digits long. Uh, sorry, 150 digits long. And now they multiply the two together. So they get this huge number that's about 300 digits long. And this is the encoding key. So instead of using 253, they use this number. Now, when the baddie now finds my encoded password of 6825, he now gets this encoding key off the bank's website. And he can't work out what are the two prime numbers that were multiplied together to get it. It's very, very difficult and time consuming to factor large numbers. So to factor this 300 digit number into its two primes would take uh, millions of years using computers today. So that then ensures that the only people who can encode, uh, decode the message are the bank because they're the only ones who know the two prime numbers that were used to multiply together to get the encoding key. So I hope you can see here how prime numbers, which were totally useless, are now used in something that's very, very essential in modern day life. If you've liked this video, uh, you can have a look at some of my other videos on how things work, including how Google search works, how JPEG works, and how GPS works. But apart from that, I'll say goodbye.